So the time has come to talk about Super Brawl 3. This is a popular installment to this Nickelodeon Flash series, and it has a very interesting story behind it. The Super Brawl series was started by MP Game Studio in 2009. They continued with it throughout 2010, introducing new characters from different Nickelodeon shows as it went. It all came together in Super Brawl 2, which came out toward the end of the year. It was a beloved game with many different characters and settings. Things were looking up for the series and the company behind it. Then unfortunately, on September 7th, 2011, MP Game Studio shut down. This meant they couldn't continue the Super Brawl series or any of the other games that they had on Nick.com. So in 2013, development was passed on to Workin' Man, a reputable company that made many Flash games adored by players at the time. This wasn't the only MP Game Studio title taken over by Workin' Man, but some of their other continuations weren't quite as adored by fans. Just look at MP's Block Party compared to Workin' Man's Block Party 2. Workin' Man also took over their popular Flash game, SpongeBob's Next Big Adventure, but they removed features and drastically changed parts of the game, such as replacing the platforming Frozen Face-Off stage with a more simple but strangely controlled one. I didn't mention that in my last review, so thank you to the commenters who pointed it out. So with the series as beloved as Super Brawl, they couldn't hold anything back. They had to give Super Brawl their super all. So now let's take a look at Super Brawl 3, Good vs. Evil. To start off, listen to the killer menu theme. If that doesn't get you pumped, I don't know what will. The theme is good versus evil, so we have a selection of heroic and villainous characters for our roster. Right away, this broke the trend of every Super Brawl game before it. While Jingle Brawl through Super Brawl 2 built on its existing cast by adding new characters with every update, this one essentially has an entirely new cast altogether. SpongeBob, Plankton, and Timmy made a return, as well as the Legend of Korra version of Aang, but everyone else is someone new. Our villains from Legend of Korra include Amon and Tano, antagonists from the first season. Another interesting addition is Bloom from the Winx Club, and I know what you're thinking. Lucy, are you just making this video to express your undying love for the Winx Club again? Maybe just a little. Countering Timmy is Crocker, and he's a great choice because how many games do you get to play as Crocker, let alone fighting games? The Big Dog series here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which has all four turtles along with Shredder. I know they take up a bit of roster space, but with a franchise as beloved as TMNT with such a recognizable main cast, it would be strange to leave any of them out. All-Star Brawl had Leo and Mikey in the first game and Donnie and Raph in the second, but that was a bit of a weird decision. Aren't Leo and Mikey the more popular ones? Why leave them out? From Sanjay and Craig, the title characters are here with Nude Man and Tough Lips. I mean, I'd be a villain too if my name was Nude Man. There's also Poe and Master Junji from Kung Fu Panda, and the Breadwinners without any enemies. The Bread Losers couldn't make it. Now when I first played, I found the strangest additions to the cast to be Bob and Squeep from Monsters vs. Aliens, as well as the Rapids from Rayman and their spin-off series. Both of these were once owned by Nickelodeon, though their shows aren't talked about very often. I remember Monsters vs. Aliens being a fairly decent movie though, surprised it isn't talked about more. The final edition is Abrasive Spongebob, Spongebob, who's marketed as the main villain and the final boss of story mode. He only appeared in one Spongebob episode, but the online games made sure he wasn't forgotten. But to be honest, it wasn't all too different from Rock Bottom appearing in nearly every Spongebob game for the longest time despite only appearing in one episode. Spongebob took every element of its world seriously, and I can respect that. Now we also have to take a moment to mention the Fallen. Gold Ranger and Xandrid from Power Rangers were once members of this grouping, but they were removed over time. It's believed they were removed because their show was over, which is kind of strange. It might have also been a rights issue, but the Power Rangers continued to appear in other Nickelodeon games, so who knows? So now let's take a look at some of the different modes here. For the first time, we have multiplayer mode. Let's give it a try. Hello? Anyone here? Let's try the other option. Nobody log on, we might end up in a Lucy video. One great addition is training mode. In the previous games, you would fight a punching bag, but here you fight another character who moves around and gives you a better feel of what you'll be up against. 
Now I do have a bit of a criticism. Every character has their own combination for their special move, but unlike in the previous games, you can't see it at the pause menu. You can only view it during training mode, so if you're in a fight and you forget it, you're out of luck. Our other two modes are story mode and free play. Story mode doesn't actually have a story, you just fight through the heroes or the villains depending on which side you're on. Obviously, my go-to is Bloom. Hey, pretend this guy is Diaspro. Also, the background music is awesome. <laughs> Though speaking of the Winx Club, it's kind of strange that Bloom doesn't have a villain. The tricks are almost just as popular as the Winx themselves, and the Winx Club is a show that really lends itself to the idea of a fighting game, so I'm surprised they didn't take advantage of it when given the opportunity. Anyway, this game introduced a new feature called the Fans. Before every fight, you select a boy or a girl in the image of whichever character you're playing as, or just anyone in some cases, and they act as a second special move where they swoop in to help you out. The fan designs are really creative, and the mechanic is interesting, but the idea is a bit strange. I feel like they could have been other characters from each of the shows instead. I mean, who does this kid think he is claiming to be Bloom's biggest fan? The fan's mechanic is also a little inconsistent. Some fan moves are extremely powerful and nearly impossible to avoid, while others are more laughable. It's easy to fill up your fan bar by launching a bunch of hits, so you'll likely be able to use it at least once every battle. Sanjay and Craig's will drop a bunch of arcade machines on the enemy, which can make all the difference, but others like Donnie's can miss if you don't time it right, and the Rabbids one is just merciless. Though as we can see, the fighting animation is really nice and fluid. The whole game has a sort of dark aesthetic, which makes it really stand out from the other Super Brawls. I like the animation, and it's nice to see everyone drawn in the same style. I do also love how everyone was in their own distinct style in the games before this, but they're both good for their own reasons. So now let's take a closer look at the fighting aspect. In most fighting games, when a character is struck, they fall back a bit and put more distance between them and their rival. In this, that doesn't really happen. Sure, you move like an inch or two, but you still stay in the same proximity to your opponent, who kind of moves with you, so that makes it easier for faster characters to just obliterate whoever they're fighting. To be honest though, this game does have the same exploitable mechanic as the Super Brawls before too. If you just keep smashing the punch and kick buttons, you can mash your way to victory. You'll take a few hits, sure, but you'll eventually get there. I wouldn't say against a sentient opponent who knows what they're doing, but certainly against the AI. You do have the option to set your opponent to easy, medium, or hard, but this mostly just determines how often they block. So let's go through the characters and see which ones have the best fighting styles. Sanjay and Craig are just unfair. Sanjay whips Craig around and covers a good deal of space. It's hard to get a safe distance from them. They're lightning fast and can easily seize a victory. Their special move is hard to pull off, but if they can do it, they'll hit you wherever you are. Tough Lips can get some range by lashing his hair for one move, but he's slow and unremarkable. Should call him Weak Lips. SpongeBob is a merciless beast because this creature moves at the speed of light. He's also probably my favorite to play as. His fan kind of sucks, but he makes up for it. Also, his victory animation looks a little weird to me. I don't know, but something about it just seems off. Abrasive SpongeBob isn't too different, just if you like the color green. His fan move will absolutely destroy you. Nude Man isn't that great. Basically, any character who looks like some dude will get decimated by their more animated counterparts. He can land multiple moves at once, but they don't do too much damage. His special move is also... Uh... Not sure I like that very much. The Breadwinners, like the other duo Sanjay and Craig, can be ruthless with their speed and space coverage. How's that for a lesson in teamwork? Now for the Turtles, Leo, Donnie, and Mikey all cover more or less the same amount of ground with their regular attack, and they're all formidable, but then there's Raph. I like his side, but you have to get up close and personal to use them. This makes him suck, but I still enjoy playing as him for the repeated stabity stab. Timmy has a jetpack and magic medieval weaponry. He's fast when it comes to approaching, evading, and attacking, so he's basically your worst nightmare. Unless you're playing as him, then congrats on the victory. As much as I've praised Bloom, she isn't that great. She's kind of slow, and her attacks aren't anything remarkable. Thankfully, I'm a master key smasher, so it doesn't matter too much. Now, Shredder is a dud. He has no redeeming qualities because he's both slow and short-ranged. How does this guy ever pose a threat to the turtles? This trio of rabbits will mess you up, especially when they slam down. These quick little buggers are sure to annoy anyone on the opposite end. Now, Crocker is a lot of fun to play as, and I love that his special move is his trademark fairy godparents freak out, but he's a bit of a pushover. But he's mostly fun to use for the novelty of playing as Crocker. Still can't believe he has a fangirl, she's literally me. I don't recommend playing as Squeep. 
He's extremely slow, and pacing is everything in this. Bob and Poe are fairly standard. Not great, but not bad either. Except for Poe's body slam, that's killer. Also, it's worth it to beat Bob because you can stand victoriously in his melted remains. Master Junji is quick and jumps all over the screen. A keyboard expert could probably handle him, but he's tough. Now, Plankton actually kind of disappointed me. Instead of mind-controlling someone, he's in a mechanical suit this time. Both as a character and a fighter, he seemed interesting to play as, but his range is small and he isn't that noteworthy. No wonder Abrasive Spongebob got the main villain spot over him. Aang is also a character who's gotten increasingly less remarkable as the Super Brawls went on. Maybe it's his old age, but he just isn't as tough as he used to be. Korra, on the other hand, is relentless. Amon and Tano are both kinda weak, though. Again, if you have to get up close and personal to fight, you'll get trampled by the characters with more range. So that about does it for everyone. Overall, this is a decent fighting game. It isn't trying to be the next big installment in a major series, it's just a cool Nickelodeon Flash game. For what it is, it's pretty good. You can have a lot of fun seeing what these different characters can do. It's nice to see the references to each of the shows and how they're implemented into combat. The style is also unique, with more darker locations like this graffitied Krusty Krab. This really made itself stand out from the rest of the Super Brawl series, and I appreciate that. It's no surprise that it amassed a sizable following. It was the most played Super Brawl and was nominated for a Webby Award for Best Web Game in 2014. But there is one Super Brawl that just might take the title for the greatest online game ever made. And it happened to be a spin-off of this one. Do you think you're ready for it? I don't think anything could prepare you for the sheer magnificence you're about to witness. Brace yourselves for Super Brawl 3, Just Got Real. This spinoff was released as an April Fool's joke, including all the animal characters from 3 as realistic animals. Patrick and Gary from Spongebob were also thrown in. Now this is just fascinating. It's amazing they put effort into this. And there's even a multiplayer mode. That's just the icing on the cake. Popsicle Spongebob is really strong, but Patrick has the most interesting moves when he shows off his legs. Abrasive is a beast, and for his special move, he swears at you. He's gotta be the most powerful Nickelodeon character, he's the only one who's able to swear. Gary might be the strongest one though, he can just batter you. I like the turtle designs because they have cute little utensils as their weapons. Raph isn't really notable, but Donnie can sweep you with his giant toothpick. Also, whenever you defeat Craig, he turns into a pair of cowboy boots. Imagine if the turtles turned into turtle soup. Leo's fairly standard, but Mikey has these miniature hot dogs that really pack a punch. Don't mess with Mikey and his hot dogs. Poe, who is utterly terrifying, is just okay. He still has his deathly body slam, though. Then there's Craig, who's also okay, but I'm not sure what he spells after he wins. Loop? Loose? Lucy? Lucy? Is this a callout against me? But anyway, this is a really fun game. Would recommend. Both of these are great nostalgic fighting games that you can get some enjoyment out of. I'm glad we were able to go through them and see what they had to offer. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.